I'm sure. Uh, okay. Got it. Perfect. So we're going to start out with budget here. And uh, budget leading the work. I thought you usually do that after we uh, over here to call to order. But you did after the, the budget here. And then we do. So if we do a second. But we're going to do a second. We're going to do one. We do it now. Okay. We're now. We can get it. It's really like in the United States of America. And the good republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty of that sorrow. Hey, that's funny. Oh, you would you like to share first? first. It's in the seating on the back. No, I'll let like the people cheat. Look at it. I know I'm right. I've nominated the nominated team. I start here. Any more to the fact that I'm nominated? He is also leading the other nomination. I'll take the other All right. We'll see when I go to the chair. Just want to let everybody know that any resident needs to be signed in in order to go. Actually, it's hard. Now, do you want to do the budget here? Let's do the budget here. All right, April, you're up. <laughs> We're going to be discussing the 2022 to 23 fiscal year file. Um, and I'm doing something a little bit different tonight. I want to kind of talk about schools and how they're funded because that's how I get the revenue and we can decide where the revenue go. But I have a finite amount. So I just want to make sure um, we all kind of have an understanding of where that's going to So our judges tonight um, looks long, but a lot of these are intertwined. So I promise it probably won't um, hopefully feel as long as it looks. Um, what we're mostly going to talk about are budget goals, um, the budget itself, how um, we get the revenue that we do receive, and then at the end we'll talk about projects and the tax So the goals of the budget, when we develop the budget, we really try to keep Martin's mission, vision, and values at the forefront. Um, that's kind of how we try to make all of our decisions at Martin, and I really try to stay true to that with the budget because one of our main values is allocating resources to the teachers and the students so that they can do the best possible job. Um, so we need to be able to allocate our financial resources in a way that makes sense for them so that they can be successful. We also need um, clean and safe facilities. And with this too, I I think that when you look at the budget, we have to think about sustainability. So it's not just this year and then you know that's all we have to worry about. We're always kind of looking to the future and demonstrating that support possibility so that this year we're going to be fine and then next year and the year after this and so on. So a little bit about how we need to develop the budget. The budget process starts like last Christmas. So we um, kind of start putting together the big rocks, the things that we know, you know, that our health insurance go up, that our transportation go up, um, what our salaries and benefits and is going to be. 
those kinds of things. So we try to fill them in the best we can. And then May, I think it's a preliminary budget presentation. Um, and then May is, you know, there's still a lot of things that are uncertain. And then tonight, there's still a lot of things that are uncertain. I don't get any of my final information until October. So I'll come back in a month. And we'll talk about the finality um, when the numbers came out then. But this is a pretty, pretty clear picture of what we're going to be up next. So right now we're in September. We're at the annual meeting. And then Friday we'll be doing the third Friday enrollment count. So that number, mm -hmm. when we talk about the students in the building, is going to be hugely important to the rest of the school. We'll talk about that on the next slide. Um, and then in October, next month, I get the final equalized coverage value from the state. And then I also get our final general AD number. So when we have both of those things, then I can present and the board will be um, asked to certify the tax levy once we have everything. Okay. Full funding. Schools are under a revenue limit. Revenue limits have been in place since 1993. And basically, what that means is there's a finite amount of money that schools can raise through property taxes and state aid. Um, so you can kind of see the revenue limit authority, which is really small, but it's 2.1 million up there. Minus our state aid equals our allowable limit, and that's what becomes the tax levy essentially. So this limit um, is controlled by the state. So the only way we would really receive more money through the revenue limit is one of two ways. Either your membership goes up, so you have more kids, you have more money, but then you also have more expenses. Um, when you have more kids, and kids you can like add a bathroom or add furniture or something like that. But ultimately, this is decided in the biannual budget. So right now, we're in the second year of the 21 to 23 biannual budget. And so we know for a fact that we have uh, no new money to work with, which we, we understand what we have, and we just kind of make it work. So funds 1038 and 41 are all encompassed, all encompassed in the revenue limit. So funds in is our general fund. The bulk of our dollars are going to go there. Fund 38 is our debt service. So the only thing in that account is the debt service payment the principal and interest for our solar panel fund. And then fund 41 is the capital expansion fund. That's the one that we drained down during the remodel. Um, so now we kind of want to work on bringing that back up. So later in the meeting, we'll have an opportunity to let you directly into fund 41. We're still talking about the revenue. It's important. So the equalization aid of property taxes inside the revenue limit is about three quarters of our total revenue for the year. So both of those numbers are very, very important. And the membership, as you can see, the resident membership, that's third Friday count. And then we take that times the per people amount, which is already stated um, inside the revenue that we know that's 10,000 per people. And those ongoing reoccurring exemptions, that is the private school voucher aid. Um, and I don't have a say in that. That's just something that the state, um, depending on where these kids go and what districts they are residents in, um, the private school that they attend. So this is an expense to us. So because it's an expense, we're actually allowed to take it as an exemption inside the revenue limit, because then it's like, I'm getting the money kind of like outside my normal budget, but then I have to pay for it in June. So it's, it's helpful in the sense that I don't have to come up with an extra $136,000. So our total revenue limit authority is 8.1 million. So membership, Merton is growing which is great. That's great for us. That's great for our membership. Um, that's good for kids. And our head count is what we call the third Friday count. So on the third Friday, which is this Friday in September, we will count every child in the district. Then what we do is we have to take out the open enrolled in kids because they are not our residents. They're attending our school, but they're not our residents. Add the open enrolled out kids because they are our residents, but they're choosing to attend school elsewhere. So that gives us our total resident count. Then we have to prorate that, and then that gives the FTE. The FTE is full time equivalent, and that's the number that plays into the revenue limit. So the proration that's listed up there only for merging on these, it only applies to 4K because those kids are here for an entire day, so we can't count them as one whole. Well, 
general state aid. So this is the district's biggest bucket of money that they put across all different school districts. And the goal is to have each district have equal funding um, based on if you're a property poor or property wealthy school district. And then the equalization aid kind of evens that out, it equalizes it out. Um, so typically these have an inverse relationship because if one goes up, the other has to go down. So the revenue will not remember is cash. They can't raise anything above and beyond that. So it's kind of interesting because you can see here that our aid has been going up, which is extremely interesting because our property value has also been going up. Um, and this this happened because of the way that the biennial budget was written. The way that our legislators funded schools this time was property tax relief. So in order to get property tax relief, you have to have more state aid because again, inverse relationship. Speaking of property value, um, Merton had a 16.2% increase over our four municipalities um, over last year's value, which is crazy. Normally, you would see like 2%, 3%. So to see 16, I was like, I don't believe that they have the right word. But it's true. So um, you can see here again that our district is above the state aid average. So we've got more general aid, more property taxes. So then what that really leads to is a massive decline in the mill rate. So this is what will show up on your tax bill just for Merton School District. There's a lot of other stuff in your tax bill. I cannot speak to that. All I can speak to is this. Um, but I mean, you can see over four years, it's more than a dollar decrease, which is very significant and interesting because this isn't typical, but we haven't really been living in a typical world for a couple years, so we're just going to roll with it. Um, and we have 3.43% are dollars, $3.43 projected um, for the tax levy. And again, in October, I'll have the final number because I will have all my real numbers, and then I can, um, that's what I'll be asking the board to certify. Right now, this isn't final. This is just still in my best guess. Um, but what this means is we're taking all of that property value and you're basically expanding the denominator. So you're taking um, the property in the district and dividing it over way more value. So that's how we end up with that lower mill rate. What happens to this in the future, I cannot say. Um, it, it will all depend on what ends up for the 23 to 25 biennial budget. And we're a little ways away, so I won't, I won't talk about that tonight. So now that we know where all of our money comes from, here is a pie chart. Um, tax levy and equalization aid is about 77%, as we know. If you add in the open enrollment, because remember from the membership slide, I said that you had to take out the open enrolled in kids. We do get revenue for those kids because we're the ones educating them. So that 10%, 10 percent 10.5% for open enrollment, that comes to me in June. In June, I get a big um, statement with our final aid payment, our open enrollment, income, our revenue, and also what we owe for the open enrollment outside kids, the ones that are our residents but decided to attend elsewhere. So between the tax levy, the equalization, and an open enrollment, that's like most of our money right there. The federal revenue that you're seeing is going to be the ESSER and title grants, and then the state revenue is things like uh, transportation aid, other categorical aid, common school funds things like that. And then this is where it goes. So salaries and benefits we know is our biggest expense. That's normal for a school district or a service industry, you know, we want um, to invest in our staff. If you add in most of the fund 27 transfer, because what the fund 27 transfer is, is money that is being required to move from the general fund to cover costs and special ed. The bulk of this is salaries and benefits. So if you take that plus salaries plus benefits, again, that's the bulk of our expenses. I think it's about three quarters of our expenses. Um, purchase services is a 13 percent. That's like our transportation, our utilities, a lot of our building for ground stuff. Um, I mean, basically that we pay a contractor or someone else to do for us. Open enrollment. So this is this is the kids that chose that our 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 residents that chose to go elsewhere. That's that six percent. Of our total expenses, and then we've got like, supplies and other making up a very small portion. 
So here's some projects that we've been working on. Um, these were all board approved. So we've talked about all of these before. Um, our school signs are up and running and they're really fun. I don't know if you guys have noticed the graphics that Ron has been putting on there, but it's a good time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but now we're making more work. So we've got the intermediate exterior work that's still being planned. Um, we did get the first grade furniture, we did um, the asphalt resurfacing over summer. And then the unit of us will be able to raise things up there. And that's something we're utilizing the after $2 for. Okay, three. Okay. So after 23 are still on the table, um, I just want to keep kind of talking about these so they don't get lost in the shuffle because they are big dollar amounts um, for our district. After two being three years, almost 47,000, and then after three being 572,000. So that's significant money for us. Um, and what we've done with other two is a lot of intervention materials, um, targeting learning loss, basically um, tutoring for kids that need it, anything that kind of closes that learning gap that COVID caused. Even though we were in person basically the whole time, it still, it just wasn't the thing. So we're doing everything that we can um, to get those kids back up and running. Um, and professional development, a lot of that development is based on how you see supportive intervention supplies um, and things like that. So the other thing we're usually doing with that is thinking about um, that's going to improve the air flow and that is a qualified expense under F2. After three, our allocation is 572000 the biggest expense we're being here with that grant is we've got two specialists, one literacy and one math. And we're going to be seeking for their salaries and benefits for two years. So it could be over two years. Um, it it chews up most of that, really. The other thing with the after three this year is that I may be using a portion for special ed funding. We started an early childhood program this year, and with starting a program club coming up. So I'm debating on taking about 40000 from after three and applying it to special ed, which is an allowable expense. Um, if we didn't have this grant and we still have our special ed cost increasing, what would happen is it would increase our funding 10 to 27 transfer. So by utilizing these dollars and basically just keeping the money that's in the general fund freed up for other purposes. Um, I will have an exact dollar amount and an answer on whether I'm even going to use it or not next month. This is just kind of an overview of our expenditures. Our total general fund fund time, um, almost 10.4 million. Special revenue fund 21 is that's our gifts and donations. So when we approve donations at the board level, that's where that money goes. It's fund 21, so we keep it separate. And the only thing that you can spend donation money on is the service that it was donated for. Fund 27 special education. Fund 38, we talked about that for $50,000 principal payment and then two interest payments in case we do in July and in January. Fund 41, we will not have any expenditures coming out of that fund. We will be lending in to build it back up, but we will not be taking money out this year. Um, fund 46, not taking anything. Fund 49 is referendum approved debt service, so we don't even utilize that fund. Here at Emerson, um, and then food service of 294000 So that one I'm expecting the income that we've taken to at least break even if not have a slight surplus in the food service account at the end of the year. So our fund balances um, look really good. All of our funds are strong. So fund 10, we actually increased at 1.66% over last year. So we had a little bit of a surplus at the end of last year after we moved the 200,000 into fund 46. So that's what you're seeing that fund 10. That was the additional dollars that were moved while they were moved to their state and fund on basically. Special revenue trust, again, the donations account has $56,000. And that money, again, can only be what it was donated for. Capital expansion fund, this is fund 41. As you can see, it's kind of broke. It's only got $2,100 in it. So that's what we want to start building back up. And that was at just over a million dollars before we utilized that for the remodel. 
Um, but that's exactly what that fund is for. That's kind of like you're saving to come for future building projects. And then we were able to do that remodel without needing a referendum because of this fund and fund 46. Um, fund 46 has over a million now after we put the 200,000 in it last one month, no, two months ago, in July. Um, so that's great. That's, you know, we're going to build that every opportunity we have. And then fund 50 at the end of June had almost 120,000 in it. We did redo the tables here at the intermediate. Um, so that, that was about 60,000. So that fund balance, like as of today, is about half that. But that's still extremely healthy for food service. And in fact, with food service itself, you can't have per DPI more than three months of operating expenses. Like they will send you a letter saying, show me your plan to use your fund $50 because you have too much money sitting there. So spending money from uh, fund 50 on eligible expenses is, is good. Questions? The values of our property that goes from January 1st of 22. So all the increased value in our community <laughs> mentality this year is going to create that property value as well considerably next. And we need to get into the property too with all the construction of the business. Right. So that's significant as well. There's a lot of interesting power in real estate after January 1st. Yes. So we could be in a situation all kinds of what the, the legislators do because we are really a surplus. So they may spend more money on education, but we are going away from being uh, a higher uh, we think what value numbers we're going to keep going down with that and more of the tax dollars and push up the tax base. That's that's very possible. Yep, and that's a lot of that will depend on the 23 to 25 biennial budget. Mm -hmm. And they they are very preliminary proposals out there right now, but it's like, is that going to happen? I don't know. There's anywhere from $350 per people to $6 in the second half, but whether that happens, I just kind of come on it. But yeah, that's a good point. I mean, our tax rate keeps increasing. I might be up here next year being like, we want to do that. You know, and that's a position I don't want to be in, um, but it's, it's possible. It's possible. Good property value, the 16% was per 2020 or 20, 2021. Right. I mean, but they're all together for 2022. I mean, a lot of what happened in 2021 was open farm fields and some maintenance. 2022, those maintenance became full houses. The old, some more open fields became maintenance. And, and houses sell premium when those kids get tested, uh, raising everybody's tax. The, the village of Mervyn raised approximately 23 percent. All of us who live in the village keep going around that house. I wonder. Any other questions? Okay, we are to the point and we need to work. No, okay. Uh, to make a vote just to discuss the reading of the end of the last year. Sorry, okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, we have to say aye. Aye, aye. All at the same time. Motion to carry. We're on June the district administrator's state of the district. Can we take it up and get 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 up and get
standards that were released by DPI. So again, we have not forgotten about that. We are implementing that this year, but we're not taking a look at a full curriculum review from the K-5 lens up to the 6-8 lens because our 6-8 literacy folks, that's what they teach. So that is that is their, their passion and things like that. Um, before our meeting, we have the social studies curriculum um, at, that uh, Maria talked about. And one of the things that you're going to find in all of our curriculums as we start to move forward here is that that increased level of transparency. And we want to make sure that our, our families know what we're talking about and that we're very, very transparent. That was not, and it wasn't as transparent as it is now and as we're moving forward. Um, our social studies curriculum is all online. Um, we're going to be moving and really starting to communicate all of our SELs. So as soon as things come up and that we're able to push those out online, uh, like our mathematics textbook, that's a text. Again, then we have to kind of balance that copyright thing. But again, one of the key components that we really want to make forward or make sure that we do is that transparency level for all of our families as well as our staff too as well. So um, this year we're committing your Spanish curriculum as well. Um, one of the things that we are we've been really focusing in on too is that we really collaborated with our staff is the new is iReady, which is the universal screener. Uh, again, that kind of launches us into that MLSS or multi-level system of support for all learners, academic, behavioral. Um, we've got some new major keys and a lot of new uh, new processes that we kind of took a look at. We had a team of educators from both buildings that uh, really put forward some great documents as we take a look at meeting the needs of all learners. What do we do? They know it. What do we do? They don't know it. How do we support all learners moving through our system? Um, and then finally, uh, looking at our data. Okay, so um, the student achievement team spent significant time reviewing and putting together a data dashboard. Uh, and those dashboards, again, it's all on our website uh, to be able to kind of monitor that academic component, um, as well as some of the other areas that uh, we really fought for to really be, these are things that we want to highlight and want to continue to track and be very public about how we are doing academically in a lot of the different areas too as well. So again, that's information that's all on our website. But again, we'll be tracking milestones as we go throughout the year and uh, building in that as we go there. Um, facility finances. Um, 
thank you to April who just presented uh, the state of our finances. Again, very, very strong. Um, you see our fund balances right there. Again, very healthy. Uh, and as pointed out, we did just have about a $1.8 million rebuttal, pulled about a million dollars out of reserve, 1.8 approximately. So again, there is a plan for us to continue to really bolster that back up. Because as we take a look at future facility needs, whether it be through growing enrollment and or some of our life safe things that have been highlighted that we need to bring up to par, um, those are big ticket items. But again, we want to be able to handle those through our operating and or some of our rainy day funds, 41 to 46. So a little bit later uh, in the budget, we'll have an opportunity to levy into that fund 41. And as projected, we do not anticipate spending any of those uh, dollars on facility in the future. Well, uh, community engagement, again, what we try to do is again, we want to involve as many people as possible, or and if they're not able to, you know, how can they get involved? But ultimately, it's that level of transparency we want to bring. Again, that's a, that's a whole different level, too, of making sure people feel comfortable. Um, you know, we just want to engage people, you know, whether it be through signage, thank you very much, the PTO, uh, who went 50-50 on that, which is a huge thing, and they will be up, our primary school one will be up and going, hopefully very soon. Uh, but again, how do we continue to engage? Basically, because 75 to 80 percent of our folks who are taxpayers do not have children that directly attend our school district. So again, how do we continue to engage them? And whether that's through media, whether it's through social media and or print media, how do we continue to really try to get them to understand what is happening? And as you've seen, we do have a tremendous amount of growth. So we are trying to put together uh, some plans about how do we, you know, what kind of formal plan can we uh, bring together because this year I think we have about 60 families that are brand new to our district. So uh, how do we can continue to welcome them and get them the information that they need and or direct them to where it is that we continue to do that. Uh, finally, workforce engagement, again, probably, you know, the health, the, the heartbeat of our uh, organization is our staff, certainly. And how do we continue to give them the skills, the resources, the development, um, the compensation, the benefits, to really make this a great, great organization where people really want to be here. Um, the pieces we are going to be embarking in uh, some culture and climate surveys, some workforce engagement surveys to help us transition into our new strategic plan. Uh, the board uh, started exit interviews, uh, formal third party exit interviews. So again, really trying to gather that feedback to really make our organization that much better as we take a look at some things that we can do to support our staff and how do we become the organization we want to become and meet those goals organizationally too, because again, we need all of our staff with us. Um, and again, we have an extensive professional development plan that uh, we work very hard with our administrative team. Maria leads that charge in conjunction with our principal. We've got some frameworks for some Wednesday meetings that are that are broken up between district and building. Uh, we have active building leadership team that gave a tremendous amount of input to those two as well. Again, it's that workforce engagement. How do we get them involved to do the adaptive work uh, that really makes a difference in their lives and ultimately our kids as well, too? So, again, we need to continue to get those guys uh, developed and trained, and uh, again, we want them on board with us, too, as well. So, those are kind of the four big highlights of our strategic plan, what we're kind of working on this year. And again, as we think about, in addition to the strategic plan, obviously, we're going to be working on a new strategic plan, data data, full dashboard. Uh, but we've created new opportunities. Obviously, if you walk around our facility here, especially in our 75 wing, um, we've got some really cool spaces. So how do we utilize the spaces and how do we train our staff? Because we've had to lean on some people for some new trainings, whether it be in the manufacturing area, our foods area, the music area, the arts, again, trying to really enhance our kids' education. Um, the other piece is, is we're really trying to really work closely together with Arrowhead and that 8-9 transition. Again, and what you're going to see even earlier for those of you that have an eighth grader is really talking about that for your plan. And how do we start to think about the decisions that we make as freshmen? Where does that leave us? And how do we continue to plan accordingly? Um, we're going to have a new 8 9. It's called the pre ACT. Pre ACT again? Yeah, pre ACT that all of our eighth graders will take. Uh, again, we're working with uh, Arrowhead. We're partnering with Arrowhead and some of our math curriculum development with the Math Institute of Wisconsin. So we're really excited about some of the momentum that we have with working with Arrowhead and Davis. We, we all win when all of us are together. And that's really our goal is to make sure that we get families information and then hopefully that eight to nine bridge is really successful. 
Um, policy work. Um, one of the things that uh, the board is committed to is that we have worked with WASB to kind of help update our policies, which are on average 20 years old. So again, really working uh, together with our personnel and policy committee to update those, all of them over a three year period of time. So again, a very big embarking of um, uh, some policy work there too as well. And then finally, again, ultimately it's where we started, we will end is our mission. And we want to the academic excellence while inspiring curiosity and personal growth. And uh, that that goes for everybody in the organization, not just kids, not just staff or families, but everybody as we continue to move forward here and get that may change the next annual meeting might be at as we come together to as well. So um, anybody have any big questions about uh, what it is that we might be doing this year? All right, we can continue on. Yep. Yep. I heard you. Um, to the site of the meeting, people from the audience of the car, district residents that are signed in and make motion. So I'm prepared to go that. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the salary for uh, school board members to be a thousand dollars annually. I am. Can I get a second for that? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Greatest second. I think it's very sweet of you to try and do this. I think we all should go and volunteer. Yeah, I appreciate that. I know how much work you guys do, and we never hear a good person. Maybe every year we go back to the get people out and rest for a while. Can I ask a question? Why is it at age 15? Do we ever have that opportunity? We did get a raise one time. We were at 500 for a long, long time. And we may have raised this step, but I don't think I'm yeah, sure. It's always it's been eight hundred fifty dollars for the last twelve years that I can remember. And you know, so yeah. So I really don't know. I don't know if it dates back to nineteen ninety three when the original <laughs> per people when it was set. <laughs> yeah. really, I don't know if it's back to ninety three. I think it was five hundred. I think eighty nine. Okay, we got a motion to second. Any further discussion? Would you have would you have done that? So back to the country. Did you have the same thing? I will get a motion back to you if you don't make a motion to go back to you fifty dollars. Amended second. Going back to you fifty dollars. Sure. If that's the world war, all right. Any further discussion? All in favor then say aye. Aye. Opposed, say aye. Motion carried. So the attendance salary is about 81. Okay, the adoption of the tax. I make motion to uh, adopt the tax levy as follows $4,089,041 in general fund and fund bill. Um, Fifty nine thousand four hundred eighty two for non referendum debt service, fund thirty eight, zero dollars in referendum debt service, fund thirty nine, a hundred thousand dollars in the capital expansion, fund forty one, zero dollars in the fund you need for a total levy of four million two hundred and forty three thousand five hundred twenty three dollars. It's an increase of fifty thousand dollars in fund forty one. 
Yeah, well, that's not the right. That's not the right. That's not the right. That's not the right. It should be forty-eight. Yes. You said forty. You said forty. Forty-three million two hundred forty-eight thousand five hundred forty-three dollars. Thank you. I'm on a break. I was. Okay. Ready for a second? Yep. Good. Okay. You didn't get that. Right. Okay. Is there any discussion on uh, budget and with the understanding that this is a preliminary the end of October, this is the board's responsibility to approve the budget and there's more than likely to be a change? Okay. And all in all favor say aye. 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 All the same time. Motion carried. Okay. Is there a date and time for meeting next year? Um, we have uh, traditionally done the second week of school or the second week of September on a Tuesday at 7 p.m. That's when you know it, David. Uh, it is September 12, 2023. Correct. If, if we stay with the Tuesday and not the normal Monday. So, I'll make a motion to set the 2023 meeting at September 12th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, we need to establish approve the annual meeting meeting minutes, and uh, it would be our clerk that would read those. Good luck with that. Yeah. All right, the annual meeting and budget hearing is called to order by the team at seven o two p.m. Motion by Troy. Seconded by Andrew, the like me as chairperson. Motion carried four to zero. Being called the budget hearing to order. Oh, no one to call. Being called the annual meeting to order at 7 26 p.m. Motion by Andrew, seconded by Troy to dispense. The reading of the annual minutes of the meeting of Tuesday, September 14th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Motion carried 5 0. Law presented at the State Department of District at 7 27 p.m. Motion by Ron Ruff, seconded by April to keep the school board from members' salaries at the current rate of $850 a year. Motion carried. Motion by Ron Ross, second by Troy to approve the annual levy to be established at four million eighty-nine thousand four million eighty-nine thousand forty-one dollars number one and fifty-nine thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars number of amendment at service fund thirty-eight zero dollars one thirty-nine hundred thousand dollars fund thirty-one zero dollars fund eighty for a total of four million two hundred forty-eight thousand five hundred twenty-three dollars motion carried five zero. By consensus of citizens of the 2023 annual school board meeting will be held at 7 p.m. 7 September 12, 2023. Motion carried by chair. Motion to approve. Motion to accept those minutes. Second. And motion and second. Is there any discussion? Correction? I think we should probably, I think it's about nine holes. I think we have nine district residents here. Or do we have 10? How many district residents? Zero. I think we're about nine. Six. Three of them So there's six or six. Ten different So then the motion should be zero. Zero. So there's no other discussion on favor of the Approving the end of the meeting minutes. Yeah. All right. 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 All right.